monotonic function. Uh, monotonic function can be all increasing or, or all decreasing function. So let me give you an example here. Say, for example, you have uh, something like this and something like this. Okay, and let me make it properly. You have this function, this is fx, and this is some other function gx. Okay, then you pick up some value of x here. And you pick up some value of x here. For that value of x, this is the value of the function. For this value of x, this is the value of the function. So x1, x2, f of x1, f of x2. Hmm? As you moved from a lower value of x to a higher value of x, the value of the function also increased. This is sort of an increasing function. Okay, it increases. What about this function? You pick up two values of the function. Hmm. You pick up x1 and x2. At x1, the value of the function is gx1 and x2 value of the function is gx2. So as you move from x1 to x2, as you increase the value of x1 to x2 in this interval i, hmm, then fx1, uh, sorry, this, this gx1 is greater than gx2. Okay, so you, you, are you, are you getting the point? So the point is that this function is decreasing over this interval. So let me give you a proper definition now, which is for uh, one for the strictly increasing function that is given any x1 and x2, x1, x2 from interval i with x1 less than x2 if fx1 is less than fx2 then fx is an increasing function is an increasing function on i. Okay, x1 less than x2 and this function is increasing. Hmm? Now, other definition is for the decreasing function that is given any x1 x2 from i, you pick up any x1 and x2 from interval i with x1 less than x2, okay, x1 less than x2, if gx1 is greater than gx2, then gx is a decreasing function is a decreasing function decreasing function on i okay so this these are the two formal definitions for increasing and decreasing function so a monotonicity it it, it refers to the tendency of a function to increase or decrease over its range. So either the function is increasing or the function is decreasing or it could be increasing or decreasing both at the same time. So a strictly monotonic function, if you say strictly, 
strictly monotonic strictly monotonic function will be either always increasing function or always decreasing function okay a non monotonic function a non monotonic function a non monotonic function is strictly increasing over some portion and strictly decreasing over other portion over other portion So the example of the function could be something like this. So this could be this could be an example of a function which is non-monotonic. It is not strictly increasing or decreasing, but it could be for certain range of the function. Uh, for certain range of the function, say for example, at this range of the function, this function is strictly decreasing, and over this range of the function, this function is strictly increasing. Hmm? Now, there's another property of uh, of uh, strictly monotonic function. Okay, that is, uh, you can get an inverse of this function. Okay, so. I'll, I'll try to prove this definition uh, with you guys. That is, in case of the function is, uh, is since, since any fx is, is not a strictly monotonic function, this is not going to be a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so you, you see a one-to-one -one function, this will not be a strictly monotonic function. Uh, say for example, you have already seen here y is equal to x square in this case. This is not a strictly monotonic function. It is it is decreasing over one interval and it is increasing over the other range of the interval. So this is not one to one. But in case if you pick up some function like y is equal to x cube, now that may be strictly monotonic function. Okay, and for such a function, for such a function, you can find out, you can actually find out the inverse of that function. So supposedly if fx is a one-to-one -one function, one to one function, you can get the inverse of fx. Okay. And uh, so you say y is equal to fx. So what you'll say is that fx has inverse function. In case of the inverse exists, in case of this fx is one to one function, has inverse function f of inverse y. Okay, and there is one property of the inverse function, which is f of inverse, f of, f of inverse y would be equal to y, and f of inverse, f of x is equal to x. Okay, now we have already seen that say one function y is equal to 2x plus 3. I think this is the function which we took earlier also in case if you remember that y is equal to 2x plus 3. Yeah. So y is equal to 2x plus 3 is, is one of the function and this we have seen that this is a one to one function. This is a one to one function. Hmm? We have given you an example here 
that this was basically a one-to-one -one function, though it was not an onto function. But this is a one-to-one -one function. Now, let us try to find out the inverse of this function. You can write this as y minus 3 equals to 2x. Okay. Or, uh, or x is equal to y by 2 minus 3 by 2 which is equal to half of y minus 3. Now replacing all x's with y's and all y's with x so you had x is equal to half of y minus 3. Now replacing all x's with y's and all y's with x you'll have y is equal to half of x minus 3 which is f of inverse x. Hmm? This is the inverse function for x. Now, is if this indeed is an inverse function, then it should satisfy this property, which is f of f of inverse x is equal to x. This should be equal to x. How? So how will you do this? f of f of inverse x could be written as now. What is f of inverse x? You found out. We have found out one by two x minus three. So wherever x is in the in the main function, huh, that is two x plus three. That's the main function you have. You'll put one by two x plus three. So you have two x plus three. Now in place of x, you will write this in the function, which is two into one by two x minus three plus three. So this becomes. 2 and 2 will get cancelled out. It will be x minus 3 plus 3, which will be just x. So what you have proved is that f of f of inverse x is equal to x. So this becomes the inverse function. Okay. So I hope this has helped you.